Happening right now, D.C. police are updating the public after this morning's mass shooting that injured nine people, including a 10-year-old and a 17-year-old. Let's listen in. Board 7, I'm joined by members of our public safety team um, to provide a public safety briefing and uh, to take on-topic questions. I'm here, um, I like I know many of our residents are very concerned about uh, news reports that we've heard, especially today, about violence in the, in the district. Uh, we are uh, also troubled by violent incidents that we've seen around the country uh, where violence uh, and guns marred uh, a holiday weekend. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are sending the clear message that our public safety apparatus and our team are working around the clock to keep district residents safe. And we want to make sure that we are using all of our tools to investigate these violent incidents and to hold the people responsible um, accountable. I'm asking uh, the, the acting chief of police, Leslie Parsons, who is uh, acting for Ashan um, these few days, uh, to provide a, a briefing on some of these incidents, uh, and then we'll be able to take your questions. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Assistant Chief Leslie Parsons of MPD's Investigative Services Bureau. As you all know, the 4th of July brings thousands of visitors to our nation's capital, and each year, MPD is fully activated to be present in and respond to community needs, as well as facilitate the many events around our city. Yesterday and into the overnight hours, we experienced a number of shootings and homicide, and that is totally unacceptable. And while we should acknowledge there were many events to include multiple neighborhood parades, Major League Baseball game, a concert and fireworks display that went off without incident, the gun violence that occurred in the evening cannot be ignored, and we are asking our community for help. I'm going to uh, briefly speak on two cases uh, that occurred uh, last night and this morning. The uh, first case I'll start on is the case from Mead Street uh, that occurred just uh, before 1 a.m. this morning, the 4700 block of Mead Street Northeast. In this case, uh, there were several residents of our community uh, outside celebrating the 4th of July when a vehicle that is described as a dark colored SUV sped through the block, stopped, and suspects uh, recklessly discharged firearms uh, at these residents. That vehicle then fled the scene. As a result, we ended up with nine total victims. Uh, initial reports where our youngest victim was nine years old, that, that victim is actually 10 years old. So we had a 10 year old victim and a 17 year old victim. Everyone is expected to survive. Nobody has any life-threatening injuries. They are all being treated at local hospitals. Um, the next case that I was gonna speak on, uh, just to give you a briefing and update about, is the case from Catholic University uh, that I know everybody has questions on. So right around uh, 8 a.m. this morning, uh, fourth district officers responded to the 600 block of Alumni Lane, which is uh, the address on Catholic's campus. Now this uh, occurred just off Michigan Avenue, just on the campus, uh, but it was outside. Uh, in this case, they responded, they located an adult male shooting victim. DC Fire and EMS responded, transported that victim uh, to a local hospital where he unfortunately succumbed to his injuries. Um, although very, very preliminary in this investigation, the investigation so far suggests that the victim and suspect were known to each other, and it appears that whatever transpired, transpired between two individuals uh, that knew each other. Uh, we'll have more updates on that case later. Uh, unfortunately, that's all I have on that one at the moment. But I'd like to encourage anybody that has any information on any of these cases or any other cases to please contact the Metropolitan Police Department, call our 24-hour command center at 202 727-9099, or you can send us a text tip at 50411. Thank you. And I know there were also some uh, questions about our non-law enforcement deployments across the city, and I wanted to ask the city administrator just to comment briefly on that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so for large events like the 4th of July, 
we deploy something called Go Teams throughout the city. Uh, last night, there were 28 Go Teams that had over 100 individuals involved. And those Go Teams have a few missions. One is to be present and provide a safe space for individuals. These are often individuals who are known to community, who grew up in community, that are assigned to each Go Team. Uh, second, to walk the adjacent blocks to be able to observe rising tensions, keep things safe, encourage people to have fun. Uh, and third, if they do spot rising tension that's not even yet at the point where you would, there would be a crime, to notify their chain of command who notifies MPD so they can adjust their deployment. So we had 28 present yesterday, uh, about 100 individuals. In the past, we've been at prior 4th of July's, we've been out at Halloween. Uh, these consistently show they reduce violence in the area. They cannot control for or stop every instance of violence, but they do have a calming effect on community. I had a chance to visit about five GO teams last night between 9 and 11, uh, all actively walking the adjacent blocks and engaging with community. Yes, Darcy. Uh, regarding the, the mass shooting incident. So we spoke to someone who lives there. She indicated that she has a party every year, a uh, peaceful party, food. You know, they set off fireworks, things like that. So uh, if you could confirm what was going on in that area. I saw on Twitter you said that this was targeted. If you could kind of explain, I mean, were the children targeted? Like who exactly was targeted? And was there police presence in that area? Yeah, so, so as I mentioned uh, during the, the summary of the case, uh, it appears that this vehicle came down the street in a split second and fired shots recklessly towards the folks that were outside. Uh, we're still investigating the case, so it's, it's hard for me to give you a firm answer on your question, but it appears the folks that were outside merely celebrating the 4th of July were targeted, and we're trying to figure out why. We're, we're working on that. If, if we're able to develop whatever we can develop in this case, we'll definitely share it with the public. Um, can you tell us anything about the victim? Did the victim have any connection to the university whatsoever? Yeah, so, so, so far, as I said, very preliminary in the investigation, but so far, uh, we're not seeing a connection to the victim and the university. Or to, I know the Marion Barry Leadership Institute also meets on campus and was meeting there. Was he connected to that? There, or there's nothing to suggest any connection there at all. And, and unfortunately, I, I can't comment any more on the victim as, as we're still working to positively ID and notify next to Ken. Sir, can I just ask you, the, the numbers are staggering. Since you held your press conference on Thursday talking about trying to keep a lid on, on violence over the weekend, since Friday, there have been 10 murders by my count. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but 10 murders since Friday, five in the last 24 hours. What do you, what do you make of that? What do you say to residents that, I know it's a nationwide problem, it's not unique to Washington, D.C. that there's gun violence, but 10 murders in five days. We have too many guns and too many violent people on the street. Uh, and we all need to do everything possible to prevent people who have guns from using them in our city. Uh, what we talked about, uh, I'm sure, on Thursday was how we were going to deploy our resources. I just got a briefing from the team that our police response uh, was in the, the margin of what we expect for priority calls, that our fire response was in the margin, that our uh, large-scale events uh, in in the city came off with with relatively few hitches so we know that our public safety team is working double time uh, to keep our city safe we need the rest of the apparatus to also be working that way i know you also covered uh the council's hearing on my safer stronger legislation I continue to ask the council to act with urgency, not to water down the bill and make sure that they're doing what the United States attorney, what the police have asked them to do, um, to give the judges the discretion to hold violent people who have committed another violent crime in our city. We think that's a low bar and we think it has to happen now and it has to happen before they go on recess. Yes. The violence that happened, um, you know, this entire extended Fourth of July holiday. We've heard from community members in other shootings that have asked for the National Guard to be requested. We know that police are short staffed. We know that MPD is working double time here. Was there ever any request made to call in more resources? And then 
separately with regard to all of the safe events that happen in D.C., how do you respond to the residents who feel that if they're not in the downtown area or a big event with lots of police, that it's like good luck to them? They're on their own. No one's ever on their own. Uh, as I mentioned already about, and the way that I can respond to you about how our neighborhoods were protected is just looking at um, how long it takes police to get to a call. Uh, and th those responses met my, my expectation. Um, I think I lost the other part of your question. Can we go back to, was there ever a request made to There is not, the no, there wasn't. Guard? I think as you know, Stephanie, if we need the National Guard uh, to uh, help us in the things that are within their mission, uh, we don't have any, any problem calling on them. Can you acknowledge then, do you see an issue here if you're saying that the police response was within? Uh, of course that's the issue here. That's why we're standing here to answer your questions about why so many people are on the streets with guns who are willing to use guns. And that's what we're all working together to solve. With regard to Veto, there were co ANC commissioners who said that they did reach out to police for assistance and they were told there would be patrols, but that there was a block closed at least and lots of people there, but not any assigned officers. Can anyone speak to that? Well, there are never uh, assigned officers to a particular block. As you know, they are, you know, they are patrolling an area. Any other questions? Yes. Sure. So to that point, um, asking for specific uh, police presence at a block party where there's 100 people, is that, so you're saying that's not something that you guys fulfill if somebody asks for presence? For personal police protection on a block? Is that your question? The, there are ways there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let MPD respond to that question about when we have assigned um, detail outside of a, a regular patrol. So there there's processes and ways uh, that they can do that, and, and we're happy to get you that information. But there there are reimbursable details. Uh, they can go through the proper channels to get the proper permits and such. Um, but we're happy to give you more information. Uh, after this if you'd like but there are ways that people can request that but so if there are block parties where police presence is requested that's something that they would have to pay for you're saying I, I, I'm not saying somebody would pay for it I'm saying there's ways to make that request and then we would go from there so was there police presence was there police presence on Mead Street yesterday there was police presence all over the city yesterday and the six district officers were patrolling I was out there with them uh, I gave the briefing this morning uh, at 2.30 on that case. So everybody was out there to include myself. And as I said, the meat shooting happened in a split second. That shooting happened in a split second. Uh, that shooting, officers were on the scene uh, within, within one to three minutes. I, I don't have the exact time in front of me, but they were there rather quickly. I don't have any knowledge of that. Um, there was not a GO team assigned to that area. The GO teams select areas based on MPD providing data about where historically there have been concentrations of violence breaking out. Um, 28 GO teams covers a lot of neighborhoods, does not cover every neighborhood, and so they were assigned to the areas of both the 6th and 7th district that MPD had prior data suggesting this would be a helpful to have a non-police presence. Question for the chief and for the mayor. Mayor, since you're stepping up, sure. Um, Mache Ashton, the CEO of Digital Pioneers Academy, lost her fourth student to gun violence this school year alone. She spoke to reporters last week, and she said, "This is someone who invested in educating children here in the District of Columbia," and said, "I'm telling my parents, keep your kids engaged during the the day, and at night, keep them inside because the city is not safe right now. And until we do something about it, keep your kids inside." How do you respond to someone who educates your children and is telling your parents to keep their kids inside because it's not safe? That school has been through an incredible amount this year, uh, and we want to make sure that they have every resource to serve families. That is in, in, including losing a teacher in California. They've been through a lot, and we want to ma make sure they have all the tools. We want to make sure that those kids uh, not just the victims, but their friends know that we're doing everything to support young people and their families to keep them safe. 
And we think that, you know, for the vast, I'm going to be real clear about something, Delia. For the vast majority of our, our kids, they're going about their lives and having a great time. But Well, that's what we've been talking about for the last several minutes, um, how we need to make sure that every part of our criminal justice system, but also you just mentioned another key part of keeping kids safe, and that's schools, uh, and making sure that they have the counselors, that they have the mental health supports, and that parents are actually taking advantage of them. So if the parents of any one of their children come to them and say, I need help for my 12-year-old, um, that there is a solid answer for what, what, for what they need to do. I think you know that we talked uh, recently about my request to my team to come up with additional ways uh, to help a family who, of a 12 or 13 year old who needs help. And we get this a lot, where they kind of say to the police or they say to the school, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do to keep my child safe. Um, and so we are going to continue to work for ways on the government side. Um, but we've also asked the council to think about ways to keep young people safe who we know are in trouble. Uh, and we have not just the council, but the judges to say, let's put them in places. Help us get them in places where they have structured rehabilitation and education. That hasn't happened. And that's what we need to happen. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, for the chief, I spoke to the, assist, the acting chief yesterday, acting chief Smith yesterday, who said even though we are uh, patrolling every sanctioned 4th of July event around the city, we will not lose our footprint on patrols in the community. Did MPD fulfill that mission? Yes. Despite the, the murders M that we saw, the, the violence M we saw last night. MPD was at a full, de full deployment yesterday. All of our officers, our officials, m my colleagues you see behind me, we were all out there yesterday. MPD was out there yesterday. We were in community, and we covered all the major events downtown. And when the major events downtown ended, we shifted those resources back to community. So we were definitely in community yesterday. Working in any resources, officers, we know there's a shortage. Yeah. MPD was in community yesterday. The pandemic across the country, including D.C., we're seeing increases in, in violent crime, and some of those cities have managed to, to turn those trends recently and are seeing decreases. What makes D.C. different than, than them, and what do we need to be doing? In a I've already city? talked about what we need to be doing. I can't talk about other cities, um, but I can, I can tell you that we have identified gaps. Uh, and we're pressing very hard on the government side, the legislative side, and uh, the, the criminal justice side. Street conflict, and, um, or at least some I of don't it. think we can say that at this stage. Well, do you feel, can you talk about the deployment of our violence interrupters over the weekend and if you feel like those programs are up and running as they should be? Um, I think that we continue to work on making sure we have a violence interruption program that is going to reap benefits and curb violence. Do you feel like our city is we have work to do. All right, D.C. Police, along with Mayor Muriel Bowser and other top leaders from the district, updating us on several shootings that happened overnight. We'll have much more on this on these stories on our website at dcnewsnow.com, and we're going to bring you more here also at DC News Now at 4 p.m. We're going to send you now back to your regularly scheduled programming.